So let me see if I got it right. Good news from the government. <laughs> Actually, it sounded like a lot of good news. There were a lot of questions. A lot of people in the audience, and I'm going to push a bunch of the questions together, were saying, electronic health records sounds like a fantastic idea conceptually, but are there a lot of unintended consequences that derive from health records? Everything from doctors who are suddenly afraid that patients might come back and sue them five years later because they've got all this data that they didn't have before, to, you know, is the doctor going to have his head buried in the screen and, and just, you know, pay more attention to the computer instead of me? You know, like all great changes, there is a fear of unanticipated effects. Obviously, you're not mandating anything, you're incentivizing it. Give us a sense from your vantage point how you'd give us some comfort that the unintended consequences aren't going to outweigh the obvious good ones. So this is a fundamental challenge, right, in terms of how, what is the appropriate government action? What's our philosophy about government action? The UK took a very different track than we did, right? They said, we're going to do a procurement, we're going to buy, we're going to find out what the right system One is and we'll roll it out. All. One size fits all, top down. That's not our healthcare system, that's not our government, that's not our approach, right? Uh, I was at my uh, reunion for my internal medicine program, same as Dan Kraft was, right? And he said, someone came up to me and said, you know, I, we, we got this EHR and it's, and it's causing us all sorts of problems. And I said, well, I'm really glad I didn't choose it for you. <laughs> exactly. Right. Right? But Jay, it's bigger than this. What I said earlier about Dr. Ho being able to extend the value of the platform, it may very well be that products and services that these good people will create will essentially render all of the complexity behind the, the screen. A very simple interface, new and creative ways to analyze the data, alert you what's working, what's not. So there's now going to be a competitive race to extend the value. Look, data, we all understand this, is the effectively the infrastructure for an app's economy. Right. And healthcare is a services industry where there's a lot of data. So we need to have a much larger set of players who can extend the value of that digital infrastructure, sit on top, if you will, and then allow those products and services to compete so that it's a better experience to the doctor, so, to the patient, and the like. And I want to make sure the underscore, competition is really important here. You Correct. can't have a market if you have information asymmetry, you have switching costs that are too high. So yes, there is a role for government. I don't want to be glib about that. It's not like we just totally have to leave the market uh, in, in non-functional market operate, but we have to be very careful not to stifle innovation as we do that and maintain that balance. What else you got, Jay? So another question I had was, given the state of healthcare illiteracy in the country, and you know, not trying to be mean, but needless to say, the large swaths of our country don't have a lot of healthcare knowledge, weren't taught a lot of health-related issues in school, um, you know, fundamentally, they don't know a lot. What are we going to do if we're suddenly opening up our records and we're suddenly opening up our data streams? How are we going to make sure that the other side of the equation, the user, if you will, actually knows how to use yeah. any of this? Dr. Ho said his patients, a lot of them are elderly Chinese who don't, don't speak English. Right. And he said, you know, I'm not sure they're going to want the electronic record, but their kids might want it. And it's not just their kids. It may be someone's sister or someone's child or someone else that the person uses, a lay person, to help them navigate the healthcare system. I think that we have to get beyond the simple paternalistic, frankly, attitude that, well, the patient's not going to be able to understand or they're not going to want it. If they want it, they should be able to get it and do with it what they will. Good. But I want to make one more comment, Jay. It may very well be in this spirit of open innovation that the patient itself, her, his or herself, may not be directly you know, managing their, you know, Fitbit application for their data, but they may empower a third party. So let me give you an example. You download your blue button. There is an increasingly large number of products and services that say, hey, patient, upload it with us, and we'll make sense of the complexity so that you don't have to sit there and figure out what all of these things mean. Who's going to build a nap for that? That's right. You all will be building it. You all will be telling those 500,000 members of the VA, the DOD, and the Medicare system that they should be uploading their blue button data with you because you're going to simplify their life. That's the exciting part, Jay. We're going to see a race to the proverbial top of applications and services all designed to help you better care for your, your, your health. Well, I can say something for both of you guys. 
You know, we don't get to say thank you often enough. We often meet people uh, in the federal government or all areas of government who fit the more classic uh, stereotype of bureaucrats. That would not be how you are. Okay. Uh, and clearly, we need people from the private sector to dive in, to be passionate, just like you guys and Todd, to really shake it up. So from myself, from the TEDMED team, and I think from many people in this audience, we give you a round of applause for being in there and making thank a difference. You. Thank you thank very you. much, guys.